Welcome back to episode number 32 of ECW Cyberslam and we begin with a reminder of what happened at the end of last week's show. Loki and Homicide laid out both Rovan Dam and Sabu after the main event and both Hustle members then appeared to make glances towards the ECW World Championship as the show went off the air. Out of the video package, Joey Styles and Taz introduce this week's show, while Homicide and Loki make their entrances. Tonight, CM Punk will face a mystery opponent in the main event, a defence of his ECW Television Championship, but before then, Homicide and Loki are in action in the opener. They pick up a one-sided, dominant, decisive victory, an extremely short match, Homicide and Loki defeating Ray Gordy and Chris Cage. In 4 minutes 7, Homicide pinning Gordy with a frog splash. In terms of in-ring performance, Loki was head and shoulders above everybody else with a 68, but I'm also happy with Homicide's performance a 56. It's a simple, straightforward match, but it gets the job done, putting over Homicide and Loki as a viable threat. After the match, things get a little bit more complicated, as before Loki and Homicide can even have their arms raised, Rob Van Dam and Sabu come down to the ring. They're looking for revenge for what happened last week, and soon a huge brawl breaks out, the two teams fighting up the ramp. Using anything they can get their hands on to hurt each other, the fight creates a chaotic scene at ringside, with RVD and Sabu seemingly getting the better of their adversaries. The tide turns, however, once they reach the top of the ramp, when the Havana Pitbulls back up their hustle teammates. Tommy Dreamer's attempts to help his fellow originals has some effect, even in the odds slightly, and when Raven comes out, it seems like we might have 4 on 4. Raven doesn't get involved however, watching as the Hustle regroup and take down the three men. His partner at November to Remember Tommy Dreamer is particularly laid into by the Havana Pitbulls, but Raven just watches as they leave through the curtain. With his hands in his pocket, Raven looks down at the hurt Tommy Dreamer, while RVD and Sabu confront him once they return to their feet. Raven doesn't care about anybody else's opinion though, and walks to the back. So it's a 39D minus, not a very good segment. We tried to interweave the two storylines, and basically it's just hurt both storylines. So an unsuccessful segment, but there is time to rebuild them, so I'm not too worried. We then get a very good promo, much improved from the previous segment, an interview with CM Punk talking about the main event. He puts over that he is looking forward to facing whoever it is who has accepted his challenge. Before CM Punk can go too far into his promo, Paul Heyman walks in with a huge smile on his face. He takes over the hype job, saying that this match has the potential to top CM Punk versus Masato Tanaka from last month. In fact, he suggests that Punk holds onto that title really closely because there's a good chance that he won't be leaving with it tonight. We then get a segment showing footage from backstage captured last week between Guido and Tony Mameluke. They had their confrontation in the ring after Mameluke was defeated by Johnny Cashmere. Guido continued to break Tony Mameluke in the back. This time, Mameluke fired back. Guido told him to be at ringside next week because Guido was in singles action and he was going to show him what he could do without Tony Mameluke dragging him down. He does pick up a victory in that match, defeating Stevie Richards in 7 minutes 31 with a fast roll-up. It must be noted that Tony Mamluk did prove his worth to Guido during the match, stopping C.D. Anderson from getting involved and thus helping Guido to be able to pick up the victory. It's two decent performances, mid-card level performances, but the fans apparently didn't like the overbooking of the match, so that's one that's definitely on me, and we continue the storyline between Tony Mamluk and Guido after the match. Little Guido isn't interested in celebrating post-match, instead telling Tony Mamluk, turning to him and saying, that's how it's done. Refusing to acknowledge the fact that Mamluk had neutralised C.W. Anderson's threat on the outside, Guido gives himself 100% credit for the win, showing a much more arrogant side in recent weeks. Mamluk tries to plead his case again, but gives up. Up. Trinity is stuck between the two, but follows as Guido heads up the ramp. We then get a this main event better deliver because this has been a very inconsistent show so far. Anyway, while still recovering at home, a promo is shown from Elijah Burke. He says that Kevin Furtick and Shelly Martinez may have got the better of him three weeks ago, but he refuses to give up. Burke announces that we will be back next week and he wouldn't be coming to Cyberslam alone. Settling back into their locker room following the huge brawl over the night, the Hustle members involved are greeted by Sonny Siaki and Xavier who weren't there. Homicide is seemingly annoyed by something and asks the two of them where they were earlier in the night. He suggests that they aren't proving their worth to the Hustle and they haven't done for a long time. Xavier fires back quickly, saying that he was exactly where the rest of the group were last week when Sonny Siaki got his ass kicked by Rob Van Dam. Siaki isn't happy for this to be mentioned, but is even more annoyed when Homicide says, why do we even keep you two around? Xavier shares this anger and looks to confront Homicide, Siaki holding Xavier back, telling him not to do something he'll regret. Instead, Xavier leaves the locker room, storming out, the FBI seemingly not the only dissension in ECW. A video package then looks back at highlights from CM Punk's TV Championship match with Masato Tanaka last month, the commentators using the time to promote tonight's main event. They wonder who will accept the open challenge and send over to the ring in time for the entrances. 
the open challenge is accepted by L.A. Parker. Obviously, most people know who he is, and this is an excellent main event. One of the best matches we've ever done. A 75 B minus in 30 minutes and 57 seconds. CM Punk picks up a victory over the debut in L.A. Park, making the fifth defense of his ECW World Television Championship. CM Punk once again proving why he's one of the top guys in the company with a 76 individual rating. L.A. Park doing really well with a 64 a fair, open, back-and-forth contest, CM Punk just doing enough to pick up the win. After the match, and despite picking up another huge victory, CM Punk is acutely aware of the potential threats around him, with Rhino conspicuous by his absence for the entire night. For this reason, after a quick handshake with his opponent, Punk holds his title ready, willing to use it as a weapon as Rhino eventually emerges. Rhino sees that Punk is ready for him, and opts to remain on the outside, not getting physically involved with the TV champion this week. Instead, Rhino takes a microphone and has a simple message for CM Punk. Me and you... November to remember for the ECW Television Championship. So it's a 67 C plus rating, increasing our popularity in 45 regions, and again, one of the best episodes we've done, largely thanks to CM Punk and LA Park. It was a bit of a risk. I wasn't sure how LA Park could do, but I know, obviously, he's a talented in-ring performer and pretty well-known in the US from his time in WCW. Other than that, there wasn't much good on the show. Again, CM Punk's promo earlier in the night, the other high point in terms of ratings, but yeah, it's basically a CM Punk show at the minute he's definitely carrying us forward when he's in the main event match we know we're going to have a good show anybody else and it is a bit of a risk RVD may be accepted but we continue the build to November to remember next week begins the final four hours of Cyberslam before that pay-per-view and hopefully we can continue the momentum this 67 C plus rating is definitely a step in the right direction